Searching for aliens by the schizo Bob. Space! It's really big! Some days, I wish I could deliver a pizza to the wrong place and fall into a cryogenic freezer and then wake up in the future. That way, I could travel the celestial seas or maybe just be a delivery boy. That'd be cool. Tell us what your favorite space show or movie is in the comments below. We do love Futurama. All right, if we're gonna look for aliens, we better start with space. We have estimated that there are around 50 billion planets in the Milky Way, our home galaxy. Also, it is then estimated that there are around 500 million planets in the habitable zone, so it is arguable that at least one planet in our galaxy has some life on it. Whether it's intelligent or not is another question, and whether humans are intelligent or not is yet another question. Let us explore the possibilities of alien life. All right, to get going, we gotta talk about the Drake equation. Not to be confused with the rap, but Drake. The equation is n equals r to f to n to f to f to f to l. And that's a lot to take on. Basically, this is a probabilistic argument used to try and estimate the number of possible communicative extraterrestrial civilizations in the Milky Way galaxy. This long and kind of confusing formula breaks down the probability that we will find aliens. Current breakdowns suggest at least one to five planets in our galaxy. Number nine, bacteria. Now, Schizo, how will bacteria help us search for aliens? Well, we will be looking for bacterial structures on other planets. Stromatolites are large structures of calcium carbonate that are built up through secreting bacteria. Finding structures like this on other planets could help us identify fossil evidence on planets like Mars. These little bacteria help turn the Earth's atmosphere into a more oxygenated one. They are the first organisms to use photosynthesis and created a byproduct of oxygen. They basically farted our planet into a habitable one over a couple of billion years, and that's why farting's funny, because it creates life. Hey, shout out for the positive feedback. Positive feedback feature of this video is Adam Mathewson. Awesome, I can't stop laughing. He was watching World's Worst Parking Video. We thought it was funny as well. People can be terrible at parking. I can't imagine what it'll be like if we all have spaceships and everybody shuts down the whole, like, self-driving car thing. Give us your positive feedback in the comments below, and you could be featured in an upcoming Schizobop video. Number eight, alien megastructure. Scientists believe that a giant superstructure might be blocking the sun. KIC 8462852. Man, I'm not gonna say that anymore. That's a long number. Whichever. The last century has started to dim at an incredible rate. Scientists suggest that the reason this might be happening could be a giant alien structure. Some think it is swarms of comics that pass by. However, that doesn't account for its significant dimming. Scientists wonder if aliens might be using a giant megastructure to harvest this sun's energy. So could this be the possible signs that we're looking for? Number seven. Life evolving in the future. The chances of life evolving throughout the universe are a thousand times better in the distant future than they are now. This is based on a new modeling study. The research hypothesizes that life on Earth may be fairly new in the grand scheme of things. If you ask when is life most likely to happen, you might say now. Because basically, it looks like the older the universe gets, the better chance life has of happening. It seems that a lot of the chaos of the early universe wasn't very conducive to forming life-giving planets in the habitable zone. You know, and there has to be a first for everything. Who's to say we didn't do it? Although that is kind of presumptuous. Almost like McDonald's calling their food fresh. Number six, old Bob. Some of you might have noticed that that annoying little guy is gone. And that's because he's more annoying than an orchestra of cats playing chalkboards. So, so see you later, bald old schizo Bob. Ha! Karate chop, old Bob. New Bob rules! Number five, SETI Institute. The SETI Institute is a nonprofit research organization who is seeking out new and interesting ways to understand the universe. It's trying to apply knowledge gained to help the needs of future generations of scientists and discoverers. SETI stands for the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence. SETI has three primary centers. The Carl Sagan Center, devoted to the study of life in the universe. The Center for Education, focused on astronomy and astrobiology and space science for students and educators. 
and the Center for Public Outreach, producing big picture science. You know, it's like a generalization of science. It's got like a radio show and a podcast. You know, SETI cast. Or actually, it's SETI Talks, which happens weekly. You can check it out on their website. But what we're really concerned with here today is... Number four, the Carl Sagan Center. Yes, Carl Sagan! I'm sorry, I just, I just love space. Well, of course, the Carl Sagan Center was named after the amazing, the honorable, the very cool dude, Carl Sagan. He was a former trustee at the Institute. Uh, you know, maybe a prolific author, an astronomer. But most notably, he was the coolest host. Well, no, I mean, Neil deGrasse Tyson's pretty cool too, but he had Cosmos, the TV series on PBS. Look, basically, what they're trying to do at SETI is they follow an astrobiology space map created by the Drake Equation, which we talked about earlier, that the scientists of the Carl Sagan Center use to try to understand the nature and proliferation of life in the universe. The Institute's SETI research uses both radio and optical telescope systems to search for predetermined signals from technologically advanced extraterrestrial civilizations. Man, that was a mouthful. But yes, they are using the Drake Equation to point our telescopes and our radios at little planets they think might have life on them. So it might not be that long before we run into alien life forms. Number three. Yeah, so Bob, how likely is it the aliens will drop by? Look, I want to remind you what Douglas Adams said. Space is big. Really big. You just won't believe how vastly, hugely, mind-bogglingly big it is. I mean, you may think it's a long way down the road to the chemist, but that's just peanuts to space. Douglas Adams. Who is Douglas Adams? Well, kids, this is Douglas Adams. Number two. Not to be confused with John Quincy Adams. Adams is well known as the author of The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. It originated in 1978 as a BBC radio comedy before becoming a trilogy of five books that sold millions of copies in his lifetime. He created a television series, several stage plays, comics, a computer game, and in 2005, a feature film based on the radio show. Remember, if you're going to hitchhike through space, don't forget to bring a towel! And don't panic! Just pick up your Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, and you're gonna be okay. Anyways, like I was saying, number one, it's likely no aliens heard a rock song yet. Look, the thing is, our radio broadcasts, you know, they only go out about 200 light years in diameter. So we still have a long way to go before someone randomly picks us up. Then again, who knows, maybe we have neighbors after all. I think the networks would be pissed if they knew that these aliens got to watch Two and a Half Men for free. But honestly, if they do hear us, most likely the first thing they'll hear is a baseball games. Aliens might be huge fans of Babe Ruth, who kind of also looks like an alien, so that makes a lot of sense. And Elvis, who is also probably an alien. Which brings us to this video's hashtag game, hashtag from another planet. Tell us in the comments below or on our Twitter, at the Schizo Bob, which celebrities you think are from another planet. Thanks for watching Schizo Bob. Please subscribe and share with your friends. Man, I wish I had friends. So please subscribe.